right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, fellow pandemic travelers. Ooh, Mount Rainier looks pretty today. It's a beautiful spring day in Seattle. It's getting hot out here. Uh, this is what, day 63, I think, of the Seattle pandemic shutdown. And, man, this, this confused signaling that I'm getting, the cross-wired information, what's actually happening, like, today I saw the headline at least, CDC, you know, doctor says, nowhere is safe to open yet, or to go into, like, even phase one or phase two, I guess. But other states like North Dakota never went into anything. Montana's already in phase two. Seattle, Washington were supposed to be phase one, although they Inslee like backpedaled about it and like it's confusing. Um, and everyone continues to false dichotomy about how we're either all gonna die um, from the from the disease or we're all gonna die because we don't reopen the economy. But the we're all gonna die if we don't reopen the economy is starting to look a little more a little worse than what this virus hit us with. Now, again, I want to, like, I'm trying to make sense of this. So, for example, there's videos going around now of, like, these cops in, like, Brooklyn just, like, beating up black people because they wouldn't socially distance. Now, that's at least how it's being framed, is that that's what happened. We don't, I don't necessarily know if that's what happened based on the video, although everyone involved in this brawl between cops and these random citizens, no one's social distancing when that happens, right? So these, the idea of mask laws and social distancing laws that are actually going to be enforced by force is just going to lead to a ridiculous number of more police encounters. And every police encounter, you then have the... the there's always an armed man there when the police show up. So now you've increased the likelihood of an incident between citizens and the police. And the result is what? You're going to arrest them? So we, are, we let prisoners out of jail because they might get sick, but then we arrest like that woman uh, in Texas, right? She ran her nail salon, or her salon, whatever kind it was. And oh man, it's a gorgeous day. Um, but she uh, got arrested for opening her store. That doesn't make any sense if, I don't know if that same precinct or whatever, that same you know lockup released prisoners to keep them safe, but then arrested this person. But they're doing that in different places, which is why it doesn't make sense. Either all the prisoners everywhere are in danger, so I guess you would release all of them, but that's insane because they get out and go commit crimes. This has been already been well documented. Now, a lot of them probably aren't. They probably are just like, ooh, I get to get out for a little while. But there's definitely ones that are violent and everything, and they get out and murder somebody the next day. It's just what's happening, right? So again, it doesn't make any sense. How about these videos I saw from South Africa? They're arresting surfers for going to the beach and trying to surf, which, like the paddle border in SoCal, doesn't make any damn sense. They're out there on the ocean, in the middle of nowhere, not touching anything or anyone, and what's the problem? Now you're arresting them. Now you're exposing your officers to this person and this person to the officers, so somebody has a 100% uh, more likely chance of getting infected with the disease because people don't understand the germ theory of disease, I guess. But, um, yeah, so the CDC telling, the CDC doctor, I suppose, at least that was the headline, again, um, saying that we're not safe to reopen. Well, then that's always an order of magnitude issue, right? It's like a probability thing. Like, compared to what, right? Like, compared to the flu, compared to AIDS, compared to Ebola, compared to what? Because we've never done this before, and it's, what, it's the coronavirus is supposedly the leading cause of death in the United States as of right now? That was what I, the, the, the stat I saw. I, I feel like that doesn't quite sound right, but then again, we're only partway through the year, right? So that's only the portion of the year that we've been through. Uh, heart disease and, and uh, diabetes and suicide and all that will probably overtake that as new cases and new infections start to slow down. Now, again, if this, if this mess 
messaging is so confused and you've got police, you know, beating up people for not socially distancing, how did these policies come to light? Like, who, who wrote the policy that you're gonna physically remove, or you're gonna physically grab a suspect who you are accusing of be, of breaking social distancing and then you're gonna move them away? Meanwhile, there's videos of people on buses, now they're wearing masks, but they're all bunched up with each other. It just doesn't, it's like the messaging is different in different places, there's different policies in different places, and I guess this is what the feds are supposed to be for, is to create a, a unified set of policies, but it is different in different places. Uh, the r not thing again, right? The r not changes depending on population and location and the and their practices right so people automatically socially distancing in places like Wyoming don't need all this extra policy they just have the governor tell them to stay home but in New York City I don't know how you're possibly going to maintain social distancing when people are stacked on top of each other like how many people in the elevator is too many one person, because not a lot of elevators are bigger than, you know, like what, a, an arbitrary six foot radius, right? Like one person per elevator by my estimation. So when I'm at work or, or whatever, and I go into an elevator with one other person, we are now violating social distancing. And if there's a third, fourth person, at some point people have to voluntarily, you know, wait for another elevator. Like they need to, you need, if we're gonna play the social distancing game, if we're gonna play the other people are lava game, then that's what people need to do. But then we need to have that messaging from like the CDC, for example. They need to tell us, hey, limit the number of people in elevators, right? Uh, make sure your grocery store has one-way aisles. I've seen one-way aisles at one store and not at another one. Both Kroger stores, by the way. So again, unified policy because the <laughs> we, again, the, the biological level, the viro virological level. We know how the virus behaves. We know what kills it. We know that it can hang in the air. We know that if we limit the you know, droplets in the air by wearing a mask, that it can reduce the spread. So why do some stores have sneeze guards and one-way aisles and other stores don't, and if they're owned by the same company? It doesn't make any sense. And it's just really frustrating because all the mixed messaging causes people to not want to pay attention to any of it, right? They want to just ignore all of it and say, you know what, I'm just gonna not get sick and sure, I'll stand on the sticker in the uh, grocery store, but, you know, but. It's like, it starts to get confusing and then it gets frustrating because you can't quite figure out what you were supposed to do and not do. And then you have different bodies and organizations telling you different inf information. Now the World Health Organization is saying we should have just done the Swedish model the whole time. Which, I mean, if you have the chance, you should always do the Swedish model. But uh, they just said socially distance and go about your business. Wear masks if you, if, you, if you can, and just socially distance. And they're just getting herd immunity, and it's like it's already over there. So we might have committed economic suicide when we didn't need to but it's gonna take years to actually sort out all this data and figure and get an accurate picture of what's happening. Ugh. I mean, I feel like I maybe say the same things every day. Isn't it always, hey, policy is stupid, signaling isn't confusing, and maybe we didn't need to do this lockdown? I don't know, I don't know. I guess we're gonna see as we roll on into phase one. All right, that's enough from me for today. Remember, I go out so you don't have to. Bye.